Hello, this is Pete from the Foundation Online Amateur Radio course. In this video, we'll be taking a look at that lovely topic of series and parallel circuits. We get quite a lot of questions about this on our course, so we thought we'd create a dedicated video. On the screen here, you can see the two different types of circuits we're looking at. The top one is series, and the bottom one is parallel. So let's dive in and take a look at series. This circuit has a battery and two lamps, or bulbs. The current is flowing from the battery into the first lamp, then into the second lamp, and then back to the other part of the battery. The current that's flowing through both lamps is the same. And the voltage that's required for the circuit is the sum of the individual voltages across each lamp. Sounds confusing, but let's break it down. Let's take an example. We'll assume here that each lamp is the same, and each one needs 3 volts to light up. In a series circuit, if each bulb needs 3 volts, then you need a total of 6 volts to power the circuit. So you have your 6 volt battery, the current flows into one bulb, and then into the next. And you'll see from this circuit that if one of the bulbs blows, then the entire circuit will break. So that's a standard series circuit, through one component and then the next. What I'm going to introduce you to now is a very handy tool called the DC Circuit Builder. On the screen you'll see a very, very long web address, https colon slash slash www.physicsclassroom.com forward slash physics hyphen interactive forward slash electric hyphen circuits forward slash circuit hyphen breaker forward slash circuit breaker interactive. We've kept it simple and if you just type in sxham.uk forward slash build you'll find what we're looking at. Now this is a really brilliant little tool because you can basically build your own circuits to test the theory. When you start the tool it's pre-populated with a battery symbol on the left and you can basically pick in some wires to start building the circuit. So here I'll draw a wire, another wire, now I'll put in my lamp, now another wire, and another one, and there we have a circuit. Current flowing into the bulb, back to the battery. We want to add in a second bulb. We can do so. Now we have a circuit in parallel, which we'll cover in a second. Now what's great about this tool is you can add in current meters to get a feel for how much current is flowing through any component. What it's also got on the bottom left is a voltmeter, so you could connect it, for instance, across a lamp, and you can see how much voltage is flowing through. Let's use this tool to take a look at our series circuit. On the screen here you can see that I've built a basic circuit. Current goes from the battery into bulb number one and into bulb number two. The power for this circuit is three volts. You can see three volts at the battery. As it hits the first bulb, it's three volts. By the time it's gone through the second bulb, you can see it's now one and a half volts. So this confirms what we were saying earlier, that the battery voltage is the sum of the individual voltages. So 1.5 volts and 1.5 volts means we have a 3 volt battery. So let's try out our multimeter. So we'll put the multimeter across both bulbs and you can see 3 volts. If we move it to the first bulb only, 1.5 volts. So that's showing you that the voltage is halved across the two bulbs. So just to recap on series circuits, the current goes through one lamp and then the next. It's the same current flowing through both lamps. And the total voltage for the circuit is the sum of the individual voltages across each lamp. So in that previous example, a 3 volt battery, 1.5 volts through the first one and 1.5 through the second one. Hopefully that's a little bit clearer. Let's move on now to parallel. With a parallel circuit, things are slightly different. On the screen here, you can see the parallel circuit. 
What's happening here is that the current is flowing through both lamps at the same time. You've also got the same voltage going through both lamps. So in the previous example with a 3 volt battery, 1.5 went through the first and 1.5 went through the second. In a parallel circuit, if it's a 3 volt battery, 3 volts will go through the first and 3 volts will go through the second. Hopefully you can see the difference there. This time around it's the current that's reduced. The total current for the circuit is the sum of the current through each of the components in parallel. So let's break that down with an example. In this example again we're going to assume that each lamp is the same and each lamp needs 3 volts to light up. Because the voltage is the same through both lamps, the supply voltage for the battery is 3 volts. The current flowing through lamp A is the same as the current flowing through lamp B. And if you added up the current going through A to the current going through B, that would give you the total current going through the circuit. The advantage here is if one of the lamps blows, the other lamp will still light. It's possibly still a bit confusing, so let's look at this another way. It sometimes helps to think about electric current in the same way as we think about water flowing. So what I've done here, on the top right of the screen, you can see the standard parallel circuit. I've redrawn it so we've got the battery at the top of the screen. Current flows from the battery into a splitter. And the split feeds one lamp on the left and one lamp on the right. The current combines again at the bottom and goes back to the other half of the battery. So like water coming down a pipe, if it gets a two-way split, half will go one way and half will go the other. Let's assume the entire current of the circuit is 4 amps, as shown across the battery here. When the split occurs, 2 amps will feed the lamp on the left and 2 amps will feed the lamp on the right. So let's go back to our web tool and see how that looks in our simulator. So here we go, on the screen we have the battery, 3 volts, feeding 2 lamps, and we've also added a meter so we can see how much current is going through each one. The first lamp in the middle, you can see 0.2 amps, which is the same as the second lamp, 0.2 amps, and it's 0.4 amps for the entire circuit. Let's look at our meter again. If we put the probes across the second lamp here, 3 volts. So let's recap on parallel circuits. The current passes through both lamps. The voltage is the same, so for a 3 volt battery you'd see 3 volts across the first lamp and 3 volts across the second lamp and the total current going through the circuit is the sum of the currents going through the individual components. Hopefully that's helped explain the difference between series and parallel, certainly as far as the Amateur Radio Foundation exam is concerned. If you want to get hands on and build some circuits, we do recommend that circuit simulator. You can play around with it to your heart's content, add extra components and measure the voltage and current. Just to close though, I'll put the series and parallel circuits next to each other. So on the left we have the series circuit, assuming here a 3 volt battery and 4 amps for the circuit. Through the first lamp the voltage is halved and the current remains the same. It goes to the second lamp, again voltage half, current stays the same. Think of it like water, there's only one path, so the current will be constant and the total voltage needed for the circuit is the voltage needed for each component. In this case, 1.5 plus 1.5 equals 3. On the right, a parallel circuit, and here the voltage is the same throughout. Like water, the current has multiple paths, so the total current is the current that's flowing across each of the components. In this example, a 3 volt battery, 3 volts going through each of the lamps, Total current for the circuit is 4 amps, and that's 2 amps through the first lamp and 2 amps through the second lamp. 
Both of these diagrams, of course, assume that both lamps are identical. There you go, series and parallel, hopefully explained. And of course, you'll be pleased to know that there's only likely to be a maximum of one question on this in the exam, and it may not come up at all. We hope you found this short video of use, and as a reminder, we do have a full course that teaches you everything that you need to know to pass your foundation exam. You can find details at hamtrain.co.uk. Best of luck with your studies. Thank you.